Hey guys, Jocelyn here with Fantasia Elegance. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make kind of a set of jewelry all based on this one very simple and easy little wire wrapping motif, which as you can see we can incorporate into lots of different ways to make a necklace, earrings, or bracelet. You could even turn this into a ring if you like. So this will also be kind of a little springboard for imagination for how you can take something really simple and turn it into lots of different design ideas. And this is going to be quite easy to execute, so if you're fairly new to jewelry making or wire wrapping, this would be a great design to start with. As far as tools goes, we'll just be using standard chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, flush cutters, and a ruler to measure wire. You'll also want some 18 gauge and 24 gauge wire. I'll be using silver filled from RioGrande.com. Really you can use any size or type of wire you like, it'll just give you different effects. But if you want to make something the same size as me, you can get 18 and 24 gauge in round dead soft wire. And you'll also need a variety of beads. Again, you can use pretty much any size you like. For my scale that I'm going for, I'm going to be using some 6mm bicones, Swarovski crystals, and some 5mm. And I'm going to be making a pair of earrings here, so I'm going to have two of each color. These are, these darker ones are purple velvet, and these lighter ones, I believe, are in the tanzanite color. But for some of these other pieces, I did use glass fiber optic or cat's eye beads that I purchased from Amazon, so I will leave a link for where you can buy that, that style as well. They come in lots of different colors. And as you can see for the uh, necklace and earrings here, I did use three different sizes. I used 8mm, 6mm, and 4mm in different colors. So you can really use whatever you have on hand and whatever you like. So to make our basic little starting motif, I'm going to take my 18 gauge wire and just straighten out a little length of that. And we're going to cut a two and a half inch piece of this. So for those of you in metric, that's about six and a half centimeters. We'll just snip that. And then using round nose pliers, I'm just going to go on the very tip of this and start making an open spiral. So I'm gripping on the very tip of my wire. I'm just going to start wrapping it around on itself. So again, we're doing an open spiral, so you're going to leave some space. You don't want the wire touching itself. I'm going to wrap that all around. There we go. Until you have a shape about like that. And just so you can follow along with sizing, that is about a little over a quarter of an inch in diameter, that little spiral we made. And I'm going to go down about three quarters of an inch from the base of that spiral. So if we take this point right here as the base, I'm going to go down about three quarters of an inch. Just kind of mark that with my fingers and thumb there. I'm going to position my round nose pliers about halfway down so that I'm getting a thicker round shape there. And I'm just going to wrap this tail around making a little teardrop shape right at the bottom here. Okay, and I'm going to refine that shape a little bit. So we have something like that now with our little tail coming off. And we want this little teardrop shape on the bottom to be sitting kind of in a direct line right below that spiral we made, just like that. Okay, and then because of how I cut my wire, I don't have a flush end right here, so I'm just going to use my flush cutters to snip off the very tip of that so I have a nice uh, finished looking end. Okay, and then what I'm just going to do is put a second smaller spiral right below this one, I'm going to have it curling inward. So again, going right on the tip here using my round nose pliers, I'm just going to put a slightly tighter, smaller, open spiral in there. Okay, so turning it on around, just like that, and we can refine it with our chain nose pliers if need be. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And what you want is for the top of this little spiral to be touching the bottom of the big spiral. So you might need to refine it a little bit to achieve that. So that's our basic shape. Pretty quick and easy, as you can see. Now if we're going to be using this as a component to attach things, we do want to close up this little space here so that whatever you thread through here cannot come out and pop out from this little space between the spirals. So to do that we're going to take our 24 gauge wire and I'm just going to cut a short little length of this to make a little binding piece. I'm going to cut just about a one inch piece, about 2.8 centimeters or so, a little more than an inch I guess. There we go. So we'll just snip one of those. 
And then using your chain nose pliers, we can just bend this right in half, kind of making a little U-shaped piece. And to connect these two swirls, we're just going to drop that U-shaped piece right over both of them, just like that. Okay, and then we can cross those two tails over each other. And I'm going to start wrapping this around, so I'm pulling pretty tightly using my chain nose pliers to flatten that down. And we'll just start wrapping these two tail ends around this space, putting each wrap directly next to the previous one. There we go, so we're going to go down into here now, again using our chain nose pliers to tighten it as we go. Alright, and we've run out of space on that tail, so let's switch to the other tail here. So I need to feed it up through this space to wrap it around the front. There we go, and then bringing it back around to the back so that we have three wraps all right next to each other. And then moving to the back, I'm just going to take my flush cutters and snip off these two wire tails. And I'm going to cut it kind of in that space between the two swirls so that we can push that raw end down into that little crevice where they both are and hide it. So I'm going to do that on both sides. And then using my tweezer nose pliers, I'm just going to push down that little end we just cut so that you don't have anything sticking up that can catch and unravel. And we'll do that again on the other side, same thing. Just kind of pushing it down into that space. And you can check with your fingers that there's no loose catchy ends. Alright, so that's our very basic, simple little design. You can achieve a very different look with this, very simply by using different wire. As you can see on these earrings that I've made, it's the exact same design, but what I've done is used square wire that I twisted to get that kind of rope-like look. Okay, and then what I did for these earrings was I just made a slightly smaller version of it. I think this one used a two-inch piece of wire, and I hung it right below there to get a very long little dangle earring, just like that. And if you're not sure how to do these little connecting beads, we will be covering that in just a minute as well. Alright, so one more variant of this design is to actually thread a bead onto it. As you can see here on this bracelet, we have a bead inserted on that. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. Alright, so once again, taking our 18 gauge wire, this time I'm going to cut a 3.5 inch piece of that. Again, for those of you in metric, that's just about 9 centimeters. So we'll just snip that off right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and make that opposite end flush as well. And we're going to start this out the exact same way, again going on the end of it, putting in an open little spiral, wrapping this all the way around to get an open spiral. And this one's going to be slightly bigger than the previous one, so let me just measure that for you. This one's going to be about 3 eighths of an inch in diameter, once you have the right size, just like that. And now before we do anything else, I'm going to feed our bead on, and I'll be using some 6 millimeter diameter bicones, again Swarovski crystals, it should fit on your 18 gauge wire. And as you can see on these, I did use um, round glass fiber optic beads, so it looks very pretty with different options. So we just fed that on there. And then below where that crystal is sitting, I'm going to go maybe about a half inch below it. So if the crystal is right below the swirl, we're going to go another half inch down. I'm just going to once again grip about halfway down on my round nose pliers and wrap this tail all the way up around. Again, making a little teardrop shape down below here. And now what we're going to have is this little bead is going to sit right above that teardrop shape and we'll position our smaller swirl this time right above the bead again and we want it touching the bottom of that upper swirl. Okay, so I'm going to start wrapping this end in towards our design, again making a smaller open spiral. And 
I'm going to keep wrapping that until it comes in and meets the top of this one here. We might need to adjust our design a little bit because I also want the edge of the smaller spiral to be touching the edge of this wire here. So to do that I'm just going to refine our teardrop shape a little bit. As you can see it's not, not exactly symmetrical so I want to fix that. So I'm just going to lengthen that a little bit. Just try and make it a little bit more symmetrical for us there. All right, and then what you can also do, as before, we want this upper larger spiral to kind of be sitting in a direct line with the center of our teardrop. As you can see, it's going off to the left slightly. So what we can do for that is to just swing this in a little bit more. So that we have something a little bit more like that. All right, and as before, we're going to wrap a binding around these two swirls where they meet right there. So pulling out our 24 gauge wire again. I'm going to cut a piece about the same length. This doesn't have to be exact. A little over an inch is fine. All right, as before, we're just going to put a little U-shaped bend in there. Easy peasy. And dropping it over both of those little spirals tightening it on down, and then wrapping the tails around to bind that together. Coming up through there, we have one wrap in, so I'm going to tighten that down before I continue. Let's put another wrap in, again tightening it down each step of the way. Okay, we've run out of space on that tail, so we'll switch to the other one. Bringing it up through the space there, and then back around and down towards the back. All right, and as before, you want to go until you have three little bindings all right next to each other. And then you can snip off the tails on the back and tighten those ends on down. And again, don't forget to check with your finger that there's no loose end that can catch on anything. All right, so say we wanted to turn this into a necklace now. What I've done with this one here, if I can get it untangled, is to make two of these shapes, kind of mirror image. As you can see, there's one here and one here, just like that. And then I have connected them. I have a jump ring below each one, and that feeds into a little wrapped loop at the top of this eight millimeter bead right here. And then I've just wrapped two more beads in descending sizes below it and some other beads again on the sides here. I just did a wire and then wrapped it around through that bead and that bead to connect there. So that's how you could turn it into a necklace. Pretty simple. I just attached some chain and a clasp. And then very similarly for a bracelet, again, we have that little design right there that we made. I just strung them together with eight millimeter beads in between each one. And then I have a simple little wire wrapped clasp here, which I do have a tutorial on how to make this. If you're curious, that is on my channel. But let's go ahead and look at another way you could make a pair of earrings with this as well. So to do that very simply, I'm just going to orient it this way with the smaller part towards the bottom. And I'm going to wrap this little five millimeter lighter colored purple crystal right above it in between the ear wire and this little design. So just go ahead and pull out your 24 gauge wire. And what I want to do is cut a piece that has this bead on the center but then has extra on either side for wire wrapping. So I'm just going to do kind of three quarters of an inch on either side of the bead, which is resulting in about an inch and a quarter long piece. Depending on what size of bead you're doing, you might need longer or shorter. And then I'm just going to kind of eyeball where that bead is sitting if I center the bead. And we're going to make our first bend right above it. Okay, so we can take that off, and I'm just going to bend this off to the side like that. So we've got a little bend there. Switching to round nose pliers, I'm going to wrap this all the way around, fairly near the tips, so we're making a pretty small loop. So all the way around so that I have a little circular shape up top and the tail going off 
on the side at almost right angles to this post. And now before we wrap this, I want to connect this to what we've made already. So I'm just going to slide it on the top here and pop it through just like that. And then switching over to my chain nose pliers, I'm going to push that down together, grip on the round shape we just made. And this is where it is handy to have two pairs of chain nose pliers. You can use your round nose pliers for this as well. But I'm just going to take a second pair of pliers and start wrapping this little tail around the longer tail. And then I'm going to place each wrap right next to the previous one, going very tightly. And I'm going to do two or three wraps like that. Okay, after I have two or three, I'm just going to snip off that excess end and push the tail down so that it's not sticking out. So we've got a very secure little wrapping right there. Now we can slide our little crystal on that we picked out earlier. So we've got something like that. And then we're going to make another wrap loop at the top. And because our ear wire is going to go through this one, I'm actually going to have it perpendicular to this previous wrap. So this one is kind of going front to back. I'm going to have the next little loop we make going side to side. So to do that, I'm just going to grip right here, slightly above the bead, bend it off to the side, round those pliers again, and we're going to make another little loop. And you want this one to be about the same size as the previous one we made. That'll help your jewelry to look symmetrical and professional. And since we can open the little loop on the bottom of our ear wires, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this as it is. So again, gripping on that little circular shape we just made. I'm going to wrap this tail around two or three times, or however many you have room for before you meet the top of your bead. Okay, and then as before, we can snip off that tail and push the end on down. And at this point, all you really need is your favorite pair of ear wires. I'm going to be using these little guys here. Of course, I have done several tutorials on different styles of ear wires on my channel, so you can check those out if you're curious about making your own. But basically, we're just going to twist open our ear wire, and you can slide it through this top little loop here, and then twist it closed. So we have a very quick and simple cute little earring. If you wanted to jazz this up even more, you could add a third larger bead dangling below here. Of course, as I showed you earlier with these long guys, I did that little design without the bead on it, and I did two of them, one slightly smaller than the other, and just wrapped those beads just like we did this one here. As kind of connector links, I wrapped those all together. This bottom one, I did use a manufactured head pin on the end there, but you could just make a little uh, wrapped loop below if you don't have any head pins to hold him on there. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on a very quick and simple little wire wrapped design that you can incorporate into all different styles of jewelry to make matching sets. As I said before, you can really mix up the look of this by using different types of wire, making it in different sizes, etc. And I hope this inspired you to try out different designs of your own that you can use in similar ways. Let me know in the comments section below if you made this, and also if you ran into any issues or had questions along the way, I will be happy to try and read those and comment. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please leave me a like, and you can also subscribe and click that little notification bell if you want to be notified when I post future videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and happy crafting!